Welcome back everyone, this is Travis again giving you part 2 of the JavaScript image slider. Of course you know this is our final project, this is what we're trying to get to. Uh, if you remember where, left, where we left off last time, let me go ahead and run this, I should have had it already open, but I didn't. This is where we left off last time, we got a simple image slider, it's just got the pictures and that's it, and it scrolls to the next image. Uh, simply that's all we have, so let's go ahead and get started, uh, I'm going to try to get this video done pretty quickly um, so hopefully we can keep up okay first thing you want to do is you want to get rid of this div here that was a mistake from last time I don't know I guess I just didn't see it but the div for that is right here so I just had to get rid of that alright next thing is we're going to create a div ID equals or we're going to create a description right because you remember our final product had a description with, every, with all the images uh, so we can call this whatever we want I'm going to call it image description And I can't spell very good, but I think that's how you spell it. Image description. And I'm going to give this a style. I'm going to style this a little bit. Uh, give it a margin of 15 pixels. And what that's going to do, uh, and I'm going to copy this. Uh, that's the way it, the uh, image doesn't get off-centered as well as the uh, description doesn't get off-centered. So I'm going to do the same thing with this as well. Style equals... Control V. Got to put my quotation. And there you go. All right, I'm gonna hit save. Oh, hit style twice on here. Okay, I'm gonna hit save here, and I'm gonna go on to the next thing. All right, so now we have this feature image, and it, we have a, we give it an ID of uh, equals the photo slider. Well, I gotta do the same thing for image description. So I'm gonna declare a variable. I'm gonna call it. You call it whatever you want. Uh, we'll just call it image description. I think that's a fair name. Equals document dot get element by ID. Inside here is preferences, and we're gonna put whatever we named this, which I should have gave this an ID, and I didn't. ID equals. Oh wait, I, I did the ID. It's up there. Okay, copy this, paste it on in here, voila. Now we got a variable called image description here, or called img description, and it's set equal to this div. All right, perfect. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and code this and put it inside our image array. Um, and But the first thing I want to do here is I never did fully explain this down here in my last uh, part one tutorial. This feature image I set attribute SRC image array index. Now, if I want to give it give this a uh, a property to this, I use this dot notation here, this dot, and I type in SRC or whatever I want to name it. But SRC kind of makes sense. And if I were to file save this and I were to, to load this, it's going to make my uh, slider completely disappear off this. Well, it's not. It's not going. This one won't. Now it will disappear completely off the screen. So we have a problem there. The reason why it's doing that is because it's not, let me go ahead and get rid of this, is because the array doesn't understand what does this mean, why are you giving this a property, and why is this property not in this array. So I'm confusing JavaScript right now. So to make it unconfused, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit easier, put these on multi-lines, and let's see. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing this because it's easier to read, and plus, I, I don't want the viewers out there to be confused already because I'm, I'm not that, I'm not the greatest at explaining things. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to every time you add a property to something, you need to use these French curly braces. So you want to do it for all of them. Now it's going to give me a syntax error, but don't worry, I will, I'll get that fixed here really shortly. I'll just start placing these cur French curly braces inside here. I know JavaScript is giving me a syntax error, but that's okay. I'm, I'm going to fix it here real shortly. Okay, now with inside this French curly brace, you're going to type in SRC colon, and that stands for this these images here. So you can do that for all these colon. And notice it got rid of that syntax error too. All right, same thing. Colon and SRC. 
Okay, forward. Bam. Now, if I were to save this, load it, nothing really happened, but at least I was able to add a property. And everything should work just fine. And sure enough, it does. Image 2, image 3, so on and so forth. Okay. Next thing you want to do is you want to add another element to this. Because I want to, I want to be able to loop my descriptions through the same array. How do we do that, you might ask? Well, I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to type in uh, whatever I named it. Image description. Image description. Dot. Inner. HTML. Equals. Im image array. And inside image array, it's going to be index, because I, I want to use the same index that I have in the array. And instead of .src, I'm going to name it dot, oh, let's say DES, which stands for description. You can name it dot ZZZ if you want to. But dot DEC is, uh, makes sense, so I'm going to use that. So how do I add this, you might ask? Well, you put comma here, DES, quotation marks, put a string value in here. We'll name it description1. Actually, I don't know how to spell it. Description one. Yeah, that's how you spell it. Okay, and obviously this could be named anything. You can name it. You could. It's a string value. You could say this is a cool image, whatever you know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this in here to save time. Put a comma, control V, comma, control V. And obviously, if you were making a real uh, slider, you're going to put an actual description in there. Like, for example, if you're making a slider of flowers, uh, you might say, you know, this, these are red roses, um, these are tulips, whatever, you know, instead of just description one, two, and three. But I'm going to put two, three, four, and five in here just so you can see that this does work. Four and five. I'm going to save this, reload, and it should work. Not right away, it won't work because I'm, i got to fix it. But if you see it, it says description 1 on there, then description 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. Okay? Uh, next thing I want to do is because, and I should have done this at first, but I, I just now think about it. I need to get rid of this image. All it was was a placeholder. I don't need it anymore because I already created all my functions and everything. Now what this is going to do, it's going to completely make it blank. And after 3 seconds, why 3 seconds? Because that's what I set it for right here. 3,000 milliseconds stands for 3 seconds. So after 3 seconds, it's going to show the image. Now, when you think about it though, that looks really, that looked really silly. Because obviously I want it to show up right away. How would I make it show up right away? Simple. Up here, or anywhere really. It doesn't matter where you put it. I'd put it preferably after the variable. So, but it doesn't matter where you put it. I would make... I would call my new image function that I've created down here uh, already called in here. And it kind of negates that, those, that delay that happens. It's kind of a tricky thing, hard to really explain. Um, but basically it takes away those 3,000 milliseconds because it's loading up that function uh, automatically. So if I were to save this, load this up, you'll notice, boom, it shows up right away. Exactly what I want it to do. Okay, so now I want to add, I want to be able to put my mouse over this, and I want to be able to stop it. And when my mouse gets uh, outside of it, I want it to be able to resume again, as well as previous and next buttons. So let's go to my HTML first. And let's go ahead and add some uh, previous and, um, and a next button. So we're going to href equals, and we'll put the number symbol in here. Why? Because it's not really going to go anywhere per se, not a real link, but I still need to put a link in here. Uh, we can go ahead and end this, but inside here it's going to give it an ID equal to, let's name it prev link, standing for previous link, um, and I'm going to say previous. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it here. And if you guys could probably guess, I'm going to name this one Next Link. And I'm going to get rid of this previous, of course, and click Next. Now, 
it didn't do anything. All I simply did was add HTML for it. But I need to go ahead and, and in order to make it work, I need to create a function that would, that's going to make it work. So how I do that? I use JavaScript. So somewhere inside my code, I need to add a previous and a next button, as well as stopping and resuming uh, so I'm able to stop the images. Let's do the stop first, because that kind of makes sense to do first. Now, to do it the proper way, I need to completely get rid of this. So I'm sorry if you guys were used to that, but I'm going to show you a better way that I can reuse that in a more efficient manner. And the way to do it is I'm going to name ver my timer control if I can spell equals again set interval which is what we just had and I'm going to place that new image in there but, but I'm going to put an anonymous function in there so I'm going to say function like so and it's going to have these French curly braces in there just like that inside the French curly brace we're going to put new oops, excuse me new image the function we already created just like that and we're going to put a comma here 3000 standing for 3000 milliseconds again so our, it's exactly the same thing I just did except now I place it inside a variable and it's really important because when I start making my function I need a variable in order to to, to make the uh, well to stop the interval okay so let's go ahead and create the function okay function and I'm gonna call this stop func you can name it whatever you want. That's just what I'm going to name it. Uh, and in stop func, it's going to be real simple. I'm going to call it clear interval. And I'm going to call in that new um, variable we just named. Done. That's all you need. Now I'm going to copy stop func. Control C. And I'm going to place it inside my container. So I'm going to give it an ID. I'm, just, I'm sorry, not ID. Uh, on mouse on mouse over equals oh, controls control V stop funk. Okay, bam. So on mouse over, so when I put my mouse over, it's gonna call that function stop function, which should stop everything because I placed in there clear interval, which is the exact opposite of setting the interval. It basically pauses it. So let me go ahead and save and see if my theory is correct. First, we're going to run it. We're going to run it and see if I didn't mess anything up, which I know it didn't, but just so the viewers can see. Okay, it's not messed up. So if I put my mouse over it, it should stay on image test 3. And sure enough, it does. Now, when I take my mouse out of it, it's still, it's still in a stopping position. And the reason why is because we need to put a function in there that resumes the uh, scroller. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that for y'all. Real simple code. Create another function called function. I'm going to call it resume. Resume. If I can spell func. Uh, and resume function is simple. I'm going to simply copy and paste this right here control C control V that's really nice about JavaScript I can reuse my variables and it makes life so much simpler okay even though JavaScript can be a pain sometimes okay so I named it what did I name it again resume funk so I'm gonna go back up here and I'm gonna say on mouse out equals resume funk Bam. I'm going to save. I'm going to uh, reload this. And if you notice, let me go ahead and run it one time just, so you, just to prove to you guys it didn't mess up. It stops it, and when I take my mouse over it, it should resume it. And sure enough, it does. So we know that the resume works, the stop works, uh, it works on its own, description works. The only thing we didn't, we didn't do yet is this previous and next button. It's not doing anything because we didn't code it yet. So let's go ahead and get that done. Okay, so let's create another function. Okay, function. Um, we're going to call this, we'll call it, I don't know, 
pre prev image. Standing for previous image, I guess. Okay. And we gotta put some stuff in here. First thing you wanna do is you wanna decrement your index. So index minus minus. Uh, just like that. Uh, because last time we were increasing it, well now we wanna decrease it because we want it to go back uh, every time. So that's how you would do that. Okay, next thing you wanna do is you wanna create an if statement. So if uh, let's see. If index is greater than, I'm sorry, <laughs> less than, less than zero, perform the following code. Okay. Index dot, I'm sorry. I'm trying to recall from memory here. Index, oh yeah, that's right. Equals image array dot length minus one. And that's all you want. Okay, so what does this do? Index is decrementing each time. And it's saying that if it's less than zero, I want it to go back to the fourth image. Or the fifth, seventh, tenth, eighth, how many, or how many images you have on there. And the reason why it knows this is because dot length means the length of the array. So if there are 20 images, it would be, uh, the index would equal 20, if that makes sense. And of course I want the minus one from that in order to uh, go to the previous. However, if I were to uh, put this function there, it will not work. And the reason why is because I need to complete uh, this part in here because this is a private function. So it's simple, I just copy this. This is why JavaScript is nice to have. And outside the if statement, I'm going to paste it in here, and I'm going to hit save, and I call it prev image, and it should work, hopefully it does, if I remembered everything correctly, and I should be able to go to on click equals, and I'm going to call prev image, bam, just like that. Now for next, uh, before I, I, I file load this to prove to that previous image works, I'm going to go ahead and get next out of the way because next is actually a lot more easier than previous image. On this one, you could simply put on click, same thing. Uh, but for this one, you can use new image, the uh, uh, function that we already created. Very simple. Save. Yeah, it's a reusable function, so that's really nice. I'm going to hit load, and just to show you that it nothing goofed up, I'm going to let it go through one time, and it did. If I stop it, it still stops, so everything still works, nothing got messed up. Now, the big question is, does my previous and next work? Hit previous, oh, it does, it goes to the previous image. Does my next work? Yes, it does, it goes to the next image. So everything works, guys. I hope this tutorial has been very helpful, helpful for everybody. Uh, in my next part of the tutorial, I'm going to style all this uh, to where, I'm going to style all that to where it, you know, it's nice and neat, it's got some whiffs, and to where it looks really pretty. Uh, kind of like how we had in our final example that we see here. So in my next tutorial, you, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it to make it look like this. Uh, so this is uh, Travis signing out, and I'll see you in part three.